Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we will be comparing Xbox Cloud Gaming to Google Stadia to see which you should go with in 2021. I'm joined here by Mike from Team BRY. Say hi, Mike. Hey, what is going on, Adam? Thanks a lot for having me on today's show. He will be the one that is assessing and showing off Stadia. We will be showing you everything you need to know about each and then coming together with our thoughts in the end. So let's get started. xCloud, also known as Xbox Cloud Gaming, comes with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which goes for $15 a month. A loan that could seem like a lot for a game streaming service, but you do get a lot of value with Game Pass Ultimate if you have an Xbox console already. Either way, it does give you a large library of games to play, and ones that you don't have to pay extra for in addition to your subscription. The continued list of games is growing for ones that have touch controls as well as just are able to be streamed in general. Not all Xbox Game Pass games can be streamed. And speaking of touch controls, there are touch controls and a controller. Those are the two necessary and only supported ways of playing Xbox Cloud Gaming currently. I don't believe keyboard and mouse is supported as of now at least natively. As for where the platform itself is available, you can play it on iOS and Android, as well as browsers such as Chrome, Edge, and Safari. Xbox has said that they are bringing it to their consoles in the future, so you'll be able to play off those, and then they are also bringing in Xbox TV app, and with that you will also be able to stream games. <laughs> All right, so while I do love traditional PC, console, and handheld gaming, I was curious enough to give Stadia a try last year, and so far it's been a pretty good experience. Now, if you are curious as to how the Stadia service works, there are basically two approaches to how you can use the service. You can either get a subscription, which will cost you around nine pounds here in the UK and around 10 bucks in the US, and this comes with an assortment of free games, special discounts, and the ability to stream your games in 4K. However, if you do not want to pay for a monthly service, you will have to pay for individual games, and to be honest, they do tend to be pretty expensive. So you're going to have to keep a lookout for sales and price drops. Personally, I just went with this method as there are only some specific games which I am hellbent on playing. Now speaking of that library, Stadia has gotten a huge amount of developers and studios to work with them in releasing new and older titles for their game selection, so you will see games like Resident Evil Village, Red Dead Redemption, and Cyberpunk on there. However, there are titles that still haven't made their way onto the platform. As for availability, you can play Stadia on pretty much any Android phone that supports the app on TV via Chromecast or the official app for Android TV or on the web browser on a desktop computer. Worth mentioning before we go on to all the categories is that Microsoft updated their xCloud servers to Xbox Series X hardware, making improvements in latency, performance, and resolution. And this video will account for those changes. I've played many games using the updated servers. Starting with latency, I'll show you my controller and how latency looks from there to the game, it's certainly improved and it really is a reasonable amount of latency. With game streaming in general, you're obviously going to feel it at this point, even with a high internet connection, which I have. But I will say that now the latency makes games feel more usable than before. And speaking of previous times to the update, the load times in games on the 1S hardware in the servers made load times take forever ever. They didn't feel nearly as quick as on a PC or on a next gen console for example and it really did make the streaming feel more tedious but now since they upgraded to Series X hardware it's so much faster and no it's not as fast as natively but it's certainly up there unless of course the servers are very busy at times which I've only experienced about once. All right, so as with all things wireless, Stadia is not exempt from the terrible curse that is latency. However, it's important to note that latency and load times on the service are very dependent on your internet connection speeds. Given that I've been using the service for some time now, I can obviously play games without a hitch for long gaming sessions. On the other hand, I do not always have the fastest internet speeds in my area, so there are times where you can really see this during gameplay. Of course, it's unsurprising that longer load times, lag, and controller latency come hand in hand whenever my internet connection speeds drop. 
Games obviously load faster and there's barely any lag as long as you have a decent connection. Suffice to say, consistent internet speeds play a huge role in your Stadia experience. Xbox Cloud Gaming now targets 1080p at up to 60fps, a very nice addition. In my experience with good internet connection, I hold frame times pretty steadily. What I did notice though is resolution, although at 1080p, it is still artifacting, and you can notice this especially as you're looking at your own screen. But with frame rates, like I said, it was very smooth, and I thought the experience was much improved. With that said, of course still isn't as smooth as playing locally on your console, and that's going to be the kind of trend for all of this. We're looking to see if it's just good enough to get some nice gaming sessions out of, and I think the gaming experience overall really hit that mark. As I mentioned earlier, your internet connection will play a huge role in your state of gaming experience. Unless you are on a pro subscription, you're pretty much stuck at 1080p resolution when gaming, provided that you have stable internet speeds. It does support keyboard and mouse controls for a variety of games, and it also supports third-party controllers in addition to the stage controller. If you're playing on a smartphone, you can also opt to use touch controls, although I do not think that is the best way to play games with. Speaking of smartphones, I have noticed that Stadia has been more consistent with its performance when playing on my Pixel phones. I was able to play a number of games without lag or drops in frame rate, and it's nice to see how Google has optimized the service to run on smaller displays. When Stadia works, it is definitely a fun experience. It's gotten to the point where some games which might have issues on dedicated hardware do run smoother on Stadia due to the lack of powerful hardware requirements, considering that all you need is a screen, internet connection, and a controller to run it on. Are you all right? I'm, I'm fine. Let me back up again. None of the downsides that I found are true deal breakers for occasional use cases. I don't think someone's going to play this every single time they want to use their console, but if you're in the interim of looking for a next-gen one, playing on an older one, and maybe it's a good idea, and also if you can't get to your console at the time, and you need it for different situations based on traveling or other sorts of things. It isn't at a competitive gaming level by any means, yet I still find it intriguing and useful. I think Microsoft has done a great job with their game streaming service so far and I think it has a lot of potential for the future. But down to our final thoughts. If I had to guess, I would say that Microsoft will support Xbox Cloud Gaming much longer than Google will support Stadia. We know what Google has done with other projects that don't catch on as well. Microsoft, on the other hand, has shown commitments to xCloud and the servers and updating it with features games, and new hardware. I think it's a service that will continue to improve in the future and last quite a while. But just because I believe in Xbox Cloud Gaming doesn't mean we should discount Google Stadia. So let's hear what Mike has to say. For the time being, Stadia is a nice option to get access to games which otherwise would require you to own expensive or dedicated hardware to play. It is an impressive service, although I'd say that the selection of available games, pricing, and performance issues are definitely things to consider. On the other hand, I can't blame other people for being so cautious given that Google has a notorious track record for shutting down some of its services and the fact that production of first-party Stadia games has already come to a stop. Of course, we'll still get third-party titles on the Stadia library, so that is one thing to consider. I can only hope that Google commits to the service as they hyped it up so much in the first place. In any case though, I do enjoy it for what it is right now, it works, and for a guy with simple demands, that's pretty much all I need from Sage right now. Thanks a lot Adam for having me on here, and to you guys watching, happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching, go check out Mike in the description at TeamVRY, I hope you guys enjoyed, and peace.